morning scripture from the gospel we call Luke. Anna and Simeon meet Jesus. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, day and night. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of God for the people of God. Is that a new passage for you? It's one that we don't often hear about. Perhaps this might be the first time you've heard it preached. But before we begin to look at the scriptures, I want to tell you a story. And I want you to listen carefully and see who you identify with, the old man or the boy. I give up, the old man cried. I can't take it anymore. There's nothing left for me to do. Everyone around him kept about their own business. Some made a point to avoid him. He's crazy, one man said quietly as he nervously rushed toward the door. The man sat down and placed his head in his hands and cried, I give up, while a young boy standing nearby seemed unaffected by the ranting. While others kept their distance, he stood where he was. Sir, sir, the boy cried out with compassion. The elderly gentleman was so wrapped up in his anguish that he never heard the young man. Determined to speak with the old man, the boy walked closer. Sir, I know what's wrong. Please, sir, let me help you. He then walked up and placed his small hand on the shoulder of the stranger. This startled the man and he picked up his head to see who was there. At first, the boy was taken back by the man's appearance. His eyes were red, he needed a shave, and his hair was dirty. His appearance had caused many people just to ignore him. But this young man wasn't just anyone. 
Sir, I know what's wrong, the boy whispered. What? How would you know what's wrong with me? You're just a child. You can't even begin to know what's wrong, the man said. Sir, you said I give up. My mom said that I should never give up. Whenever I feel like that, I just need to look up. God's hand will be there to lift me up and help me. The man began to cry again while the boy never left his side. Slowly, the man lifted his head to find the young man standing there with his hand stretched out before him. The man nervously reached out toward him. At the very moment their hands touched, the man said, Oh, thank you, dear God. You do love me. Then he raised his head with a slight smile and said, In my frustration, I have been angry with God. I thought he never heard my prayers. I have prayed over and over again with no results. Finally, I asked God for a sign. I told the Lord that I couldn't handle the weight of all my problems anymore. And I begged him to give me a hand. Looking at the young boy, he said, but I never expected them to be so small. He sent me yours. Our sermon today deals with an issue that many of us struggle with, waiting on God. This message is for anyone who is tempted to give up praying and trusting God. One of the most necessary things we can learn as Christians is how to wait on God. Waiting, we all do it. Some of us are better than others. We spend half of our life waiting. You know, at the doctor's office, at the checkout line at Walmart, at the restaurant, or on the phone. Sometimes it seems that all we do is wait. A few years ago, a study reported that on the average, we spend six months sitting at stoplights. That's over five years of waiting. We must recognize the true definition of waiting on God. It does not mean to sit quietly with our hands folded or impatiently tapping our foot, wishing God would just hurry up. Instead, today's scripture shows us of an example of what it means to wait on God by serving and honoring him. Let's now take a look at a couple of senior citizens. They're found in our text this morning, Simeon and Anna. They give us an example that even though we may seek God faithfully, sometimes we must also wait patiently for God to act. Seeking God is not always an immediate answer to prayer. It wasn't for the wise men or the shepherds who traveled many miles to find baby Jesus. And it was certainly true for that couple found in the temple. Marvin told us that Simeon was a deeply religious man, and Anna was known as a prophetess. They had several spiritual characteristics. Now, Simeon was just and devout. He knew all the scriptures, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. All his life, he looked expectantly for the coming of the Messiah with a pure faith. He never faltered in his service to God, and he patiently waited for the fulfillment of God's promise to him. According to verse 5, Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. That's referring to the coming Messiah. And though he was nearing the end of his days upon this earth, he knew there was still a calling upon him that he could not ignore. We couldn't find Simeon in Bethlehem. He didn't hang out with some shepherds on the hillside, nor did he keep company with any wise men. Instead, he stayed there in the temple, doing the very thing that God had called him to do. 
When God's timing occurred, he was right where he needed to be in order to receive God's promise. I wonder, what if on the very day that Mary, Joseph, and Jesus showed up at the temple, the old man decided to sleep in for a change? What if Simeon said, I've followed the leading of the Holy Spirit every day, yet I still have no answer from God. I think I'm going to do my thing today and take the day off and not bother with God. Or even worse, what if Simeon simply gave up on God? Then he might never have met Jesus or seen God's promise fulfilled. The Holy Ghost had promised Simeon that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah. But did that promise depend upon the priest's faithfulness in obeying God? Yes, I think so. I believe we can short-circuit our own blessings if we choose to walk away from obeying God and seeking His will. So what are you waiting on today? Are you waiting to see a spouse or a child become active in the church and a follower of Jesus? Or perhaps you're believing that God wants you to do something great, a great work, but it hasn't occurred. We must remember that God's timing is not ours. His plans and purposes for our lives may not be the same as what God plans for us. Sometime God calls us to simply wait. Now that is not a glamorous task and sometimes it feels like that God's put us on the back burner or simply forgotten us. Is it possible that God may be trying to teach us patience in this waiting period? I know some of you just groaned and believe me I groan too. What we all must remember is that those times of waiting on God can actually help us to grow and mature in our faith. Did you know a mushroom matures in just a few days, but a strong and sturdy oak takes hundreds of years? What would you rather be, a mushroom or an oak tree? That's what Simeon did. He kept believing and anticipating God's promise to be fulfilled. God wanted him to wait for Jesus, and he did. Patiently waiting is a wonderful spiritual gift to have. Now, we don't know exactly how old Simeon was, but tradition says he was about 113 years old. While we really don't know for sure, we do know that the Bible tells us that he had been waiting for God for most of his life and that he believed he would see the Christ before he dies. Luke tells us that Mary and Joseph obeyed God by coming to the temple to dedicate their son. Can you just imagine the excitement in that old man's eyes when he first saw baby Jesus? If you have ever witnessed an answer to prayer, then you know something of the joy that Simeon felt when he saw Jesus. The fulfillment of God's promise and Simeon's heart's desire rested upon a newborn baby that he held gently in his arms. Now Simeon knew. His job was done and he felt a peace about dying. At long last, he had seen the Messiah. Just as Simeon recognized Jesus' true identity, so does a woman named Anna. She was a widow for many, many years, and she practically lived in the women's court of the temple both day and night. Her name comes from the Hebrew word for grace. And the grace of God was definitely upon her, as we see in the remaining of our verses. The grace of God was upon her, first of all, and in that she was called a prophetess. There are several women in the Bible who have this same privilege and distinction. That includes Miriam, that's Moses' sister, and Deborah, a judge in the Old Testament. 
Their work was to speak the word of God and to share what they knew about the Messiah with all who would listen. And a final sign of God's grace on Anna's life is her age. Luke tells us that she was married only seven years and then a widow for 84. That would mean she was probably about Simeon's age. Rather than becoming old, bitter, and resentful, Anna grew stronger in her faith. Look what she did with her life. She served the Lord with fasting and prayer both day and night. She was a true prayer warrior and an example for us to follow. Just like Simeon, after she saw the baby Jesus, she too gave thanks to God for sending the Messiah. Then she went out and told everybody who was looking for God's redemption that the Messiah had come. She was a witness to God's power. Anna and Simeon were willing to wait because they believed in those prophecies from God. They did not lose faith during the long wait. They both saw their dream come true when they met the holy couple. They were also sensitive to God's voice and were available when God called them. They were able to see what no one else in the temple noticed that day. It seems the other religious leaders were just too caught up in their own task and responsibility to understand the grandeur of what was taking place. Today, the Holy Spirit can also speak to us and show us things that others cannot know or understand. But first, we must be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives and have our faith in him. Simeon and Anna approached the end of their life still serving God wholeheartedly and they never looked back with regret. As we draw to the close of 2019, a new year is fast approaching and we can look back over the last year, but can we say we have no regrets? That God's will was fulfilled in our life? I have faithfully followed God and done what he told me to do. I believe God is preparing the way for each of us in 2020. Let us strive to continue to trust him. May we be faithful in our service to do his will in the new year. Let us pray. Lord, don't let this year end without us having proven our faithfulness to your call upon our lives. Help us release this past year into your hands and believe that you will continue to lead us according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen.